Hi, I'm Dr. Larry Malerba, and welcome back to the All Things Homeopathy Materia Medica series. Please don't forget to subscribe to the ATH channel. That way you'll be notified of new videos and together we can educate the world about the greatest healing secret on the planet. Today's topic is the Materia Medica of Aurum Metallicum, which is a homeopathic medicine made from gold. The ancient art and science of alchemy is considered by historians to be the precursor to modern chemistry. It is said that the alchemists sought to transmute crude metals like lead into the most precious metal of all, gold. Some, like Carl Jung, understood this as a metaphor for the alchemists' quest for enlightenment. The alchemists were searching for a method by which to purify crude matter a method that would allow them to transmute material substances into their spiritual essences. Western medicine has taken a very different direction. In my opinion, in choosing a purely material path, medical pharmacology has lost its way, and the damage that it has inflicted on the environment and human health is clear evidence of that. Some homeopaths, including myself, Understand that illness is consciousness that has become stuck, trapped in a negative feedback loop on the material plane, thus making it harder for the sick person to heal and to grow. Fortunately, we have homeopathy, which has discovered a practical method of healing by which the energetic essence of a substance that matches the symptom pattern of the sick person can be used to free a life force that has become stuck in illness. While most chemical drugs merely suppress symptoms, homeopathy facilitates true healing. It enables consciousness to be released from the vortex of illness that prevents it from evolving. It is my belief that homeopathy is the method that the alchemists were searching for. It is the modern day culmination of that alchemical search for the Philosopher's Stone, the key that enables us to unlock spirit from matter. In doing so, physical illness can be healed, thus making psychological maturation and spiritual growth possible. So with that said, let's talk about homeopathic gold. Okay, so Aurum Metallicum is a homeopathic medicine made from gold. That's the very same gold found on the periodic table. It's a precious metal designated by the symbol AU, and its atomic number is 79. AU is the abbreviation for Aurum, which is Latin for gold. Many of those mysterious homeopathic remedy names are really just Latin names. Aurum is mainly known as a remedy for depression. I believe that it's reasonable to conclude that a quarter or more of all antidepressant prescriptions could be rendered completely unnecessary if the medical profession were to simply adopt the use of Aurum in certain cases of clinical depression. Aurum is a deep acting remedy that has the power to change people's lives, and I've witnessed this many times in my own medical practice. Of course, Aurum can be of great benefit for many other types of problems too, but let's begin with the psychological profile of Aurum. The person who needs Aurum tends to be a serious-minded person with high expectations of him or herself. He is hard-working and ambitious with a strong sense of responsibility. He is goal-oriented, career-oriented, and industrious. He can easily tend toward workaholism. He values honesty and integrity. He sees himself as trustworthy and honorable. His perfectionism and sense of commitment to his goals make it highly likely that he will be successful at whatever he wishes to achieve. On the other hand, when he's focused on his goals, he can be intense and intimidating, and he may become angry when contradicted. And therein lies the problem. Many of these Aurum characteristics can act as double-edged swords. As a general rule, things don't always go the way we want them to, and life has a distinct tendency to throw us curveballs. When things don't go Orm's way, when he experiences a setback in life, he can take it very hard. 
when he fails to live up to his high ideals, when he doesn't get that promotion at work, when his romantic relationship doesn't work out, he may begin to question himself. Even a small setback can be interpreted as a serious personal failure. Orm may respond to his perceived failure by becoming irritable and angry. If faced with too much adversity, he may be plunged into a state of grief, disappointment, and self-doubt. All that energy that was once focused on high achievement and success is then turned inward against himself. Orm can be very hard on himself. He gets down on himself. He is critical of himself. In the homeopathic literature, it is said that he reproaches himself. As a consequence, he may become isolated and melancholic, brooding over his perceived failures. A person who previously had all the confidence in the world may be suddenly plagued by low self-esteem. This is when he begins to experience depression. He becomes pessimistic and feels that he is worthless. He may become convinced that his problems come from his having neglected his responsibility. This is listed in the literature as delusion that he has neglected his duty. He begins to hate his life, which can be found in the repertory under loathing of life, and he becomes convinced that he himself is a failure, also in the repertory under delusion that he is a failure. Note that a delusion is a false belief. Orm may see himself as a failure even when others do not. The Orm depression is not a garden variety type of depression. It is usually a serious depression that should not be taken lightly. Words that describe an Orm type of depression are dark, hopeless, bleak, and joyless. As the depression worsens, in his despair, Orm begins to contemplate suicide. He feels that his life has become purposeless, without meaning. Orm is the main remedy for serious suicidal depressions. Remember that Orm is classified as a syphilitic remedy, which means that its symptomatology tends to be destructive, either on the physical or mental levels, or both. In its most destructive manifestation, Orm loses the will to live. He sees no further point in going on. As he contemplates suicide, the thought of death comforts him because he sees it as a way to put an end to his suffering. He longs for death because he sees it as a way out. Whenever someone makes a serious attempt to end his or her life, we must think of Orm. Orm may attempt suicide without warning, leaving no note to explain his actions. The most common methods of suicide associated with Orm include shooting himself and jumping from a height. I've also had a number of Orm patients tell me that they felt the impulse while driving to steer the car off the road into a tree. The ancient Japanese ritual form of suicide called harakiri serves as an extreme example here. Historically speaking, rather than die at the hand of an enemy, a Japanese samurai warrior would sometimes choose to die at his own hand by stabbing himself with his own sword. It was an act that required tremendous courage, one that was meant to preserve a sense of honor and dignity even in defeat. I cannot think of a remedy more befitting of a scenario like that than Orm Metallicum. Since Orm is the type who may actually follow through on his suicidal impulses, it's critical that such cases be handled with great caution. It's essential to reach an agreement with the patient such that he guarantees his safety. He must agree to contact the practitioner or another professional support person in the event that he believes he may do something to harm himself. If the threat is serious enough, the patient may need to be hospitalized in order to keep him safe. Out of an abundance of caution, and because it's possible that the patient's state of mind could be exacerbated by the remedy before relief sets in, 
I prefer to make sure that the patient will not be alone during the first 24 to 48 hours after taking the first dose. With all that said, it's not necessary that there be suicidal thinking in order to prescribe Orem. Many cases can present as depression only, without any hint of suicidal ideation. Some cases may not appear to be depressed at all. Nevertheless, when triggered by a business setback, a wounded sense of honor, a feeling of failure, or the death of a loved one, most Orm depressions tend to be serious in nature. An additional clue is that Orm types can be quite religiously or spiritually inclined. He may desire to pray or to meditate. He may pray and weep, begging God for relief from his suffering. As his depression becomes exacerbated, he may sink into religious despair. He begins to question his faith. And finally, he may lose his faith completely, believing that life is meaningless, coming to the conclusion that there is no God at all. In addition to prayer and meditation, music is the one other thing that can temporarily ameliorate the existential pain of Orem. He prefers serious music, like classical music, but I've also seen cases that are attracted to more dark or angry types of music. When we see a person with depression who is serious about his spirituality and who relies on music to soothe his mind, we must think of Orem as a possible remedy. Last but not least, on the mental level, we have the Orem fears. There can be a fear of failure, fear of heights, and fear of heart disease. All three make perfect sense given Orm's strong reaction to perceived failures, his morbid impulse to jump to his death, and as we shall see, his predisposition toward cardiovascular disease. Now let's talk about Orm on the physical level. Orm pathology has an affinity primarily for the circulatory system, the bones, and the nervous system. Orm can be prone to a wide range of cardiovascular problems, including angina, arrhythmia, heart attack, hypertension, palpitations, arteriosclerosis, pericarditis, and heart valve disease. Orm physical pathology also includes a wide array of bone and arthritic problems. This includes various types of arthritis. Wandering pains that move from joint to joint can be an indicator for Orem. There may also be bony growths, which in the homeopathic books are called exostoses. Remember that Orem is a syphilitic remedy, which means that we may also see decay and destruction of bone, as in bone infections or osteomyelitis. Orm is one of the main remedies for mastoiditis, which is an infection of the mastoid bone behind the ear near the base of the skull. Another characteristic of the syphilitic miasm is a tendency for symptoms to get worse at night. Bone pain that gets worse at night can be a strong indication for Orm. Other situations and health problems associated with Orem include glaucoma, sinusitis, a specific type of sensation in the nose often described as a boring pain, testicular problems including testicular pain, orchitis, epididymitis, and undescended testicles, especially when all of these conditions involve the right testicle, cancers of the nose, of the tongue, of the testes, and bone cancer, alcoholism, and insomnia, especially when it's associated with depression or bone pain. We think of Orm whenever emotional suffering or severe physical pain causes despair and suicidal thinking. Now let's talk about the modalities of Orm. Remember, a modality is any factor that aggravates or ameliorates a symptom or problem. The main modality of Orm is aggravation of symptoms at night. 
This is a characteristic of the syphilitic remedies in general. Sometimes that translates into an aggravation from sunset to sunrise. Surprisingly, sometimes we see an amelioration of symptoms in the evening. There can be an aggravation from cold air and an amelioration from open air. And I've already mentioned how prayer, meditation, and music can ameliorate the mental state of Orem. And finally, let's compare Orem to some other commonly indicated remedies. Like Orem, Nux Vomica, Ignatia, and Cali Carbonicum are known for their ambition, idealism, and integrity. Like Orem, Argentum Metallicum fits right testicular pain. Orem and Natrum Sulfuricum are the two main remedies for suicidal thoughts. Like Orem, Ignatia, Nux Vomica, and Staphysagria can suffer from a feeling of wounded honor. Natrum Muriaticum, Calc Carb, Cali Carbonicum, and Ignatia have a strong sense of responsibility, just like Orem. And additional syphilitic remedies that are also prone to bony growths and bone pains are Cali Iodatum, Miserium, Mercurius, and Nitric Acid. Well, that does it for Orem Metallicum, which I like to think of as homeopathic alchemical gold. Remember that the potentization process employed in making homeopathic remedies can be likened to the alchemical process of transmutation, whereby crude material substances undergo a transformation, the end product of which are powerful healing agents that can resolve both acute and chronic diseases, especially when the symptom pattern produced by the substance is similar to the symptom profile of the sick person. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Materia Medica series. Please subscribe and tune in again to the next installment of All Things Homeopathy.